in most of my tutorials, I'm creating rather dark sounding stuff. So I think that the atmospheres and pads that I've created tutorials for so far are all very distorted and dissonant and dark sounding. And with this tutorial, I just wanted to give you a basic setup that you can use to create your own pads and atmospheres that are a bit more open sounding, where you could use them for darker sounds, but you could also use them for more uplifting stuff. So let's just start here with the default preset in Whitel. And I'm going to start by making the first oscillator sound a bit more full so I'm gonna give it a few voices and a bit of detune and I don't really want a lot of high end in this sound because I wanted this to be a more lush sounding pad and so I'm gonna use filter one down here and just cut the highs and I think for these types of sounds it's very important to introduce small movements so you don't end up with a completely static sound. And so I'm just going to use LFO1 and put it on the cutoff of this filter here. I'm just going to introduce a bit of filter movement with this. And I'm going to use this tempo for now, but if at some point we realize that this is too fast, then we can always go back and just lower the tempo here. And now to make the sound fuller, we are going to introduce the second oscillator and just pitch this one up one octave. And we're going to pretty much do the same thing to this one. So just give it a few voices and a bit of detune. And we can also route this one through the same filter. If you want to introduce different filter movements for both of these, you can also use the second filter down here and just route oscillator 2 to this one. And then you can have independent filter movements. <laughs> So at this point, I would also introduce reverb because as I said before, I want this to be very lush and smooth sounding and reverb helps a lot with this. And so I'm just gonna give it quite a bit of mix and increase the length and the size a bit. And this is gonna help with washing out the sound a bit. So and now with the third oscillator, I want to introduce something different, a different movement, because the first two oscillators are pretty much doing the same thing. It's just, you know, two stacked sounds at different octaves with unison going through the same filter movement. And now we need some, you know, a different element to introduce. So what I like to do is use a sine wave and put an LFO on the level of this. And then we are going to have to cycle through at a really high tempo. So we almost get a static sound, but it's still pulsing a bit. And we're just going to play this and you're going to know what I mean. This adds a completely different layer um, to what we have created so far. Let's just add everything back in. This can also introduce a bit of dissonance, so just be aware of that, especially when you're setting the maximum level of this. And we're also going to leave this in mono. For this sound, we're also going to make use of the master envelope, so envelope 1 up here. This is where the entire sound goes through. I'm definitely going to give this a bit of attack, so that our sound just slowly fades in here. And I also don't want this sound to end too abruptly when I'm stopping to play a note because when I'm switching notes, I want to have a rather smooth transition between them and have a constant sound going on. And so I'm just going to use the release here so that we can increase the time that it takes sound to fade out once I stop playing a note. And this in combination with the reverb, which also, of course, gives us a longer tail, is going to help to just make transitions between different notes a bit smoother. And you're going to have to play around with the setting of this, depending on how fast you're playing, how many note switches you have. Because if this is going on too long, then obviously at some point your notes are going to overlap. So especially if you're playing chords and you have a long release time, then different chords are going to be overlapping and you're going to get some clipping. And depending on the notes and the chords you're playing, you might also get some dissonances because one chord is going to ring out while you're already starting to play the other one. And so this is just something to keep in mind. You're you're going to have to just play around with this and see what's the right setting for whatever kind of stuff you're playing. We can also introduce different effects here. Chorus is something that works quite well because it helps to again add some subtle movement to the overall sound.
So now if we want to play this at lower notes, it makes sense to pitch oscillator free up because this is a sine wave and so it's not going to be as easily audible anymore at lower pitches. So let's say we are going to play a C0 here, then it makes sense to just pitch this up one more octave so it's going to be more easily audible. You can easily make variations by just using different filter movements, routing the different oscillators also through different filters with different movements so you can make a bit more complex sounds. You can also use the sampler down here to introduce different sounds into this. Noise typically works really well if you want to have more organic sounds in there, something like waves or river, just water sounds there are quite fitting with this kind of stuff. I hope this helps to give you an idea how to create your own pads and atmospheres.